Well, good afternoon, everyone. You can hear me, right? Yeah, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just to let you know, you have walked into your next session. It's called Cooking Data with Tableau Prep. Okay, so if you're not supposed to be here, you can't leave because we locked the doors now, so that's just it. You're stuck with us for the next hour, okay? So before <clears throat> we begin, a genuine thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank for coming to TC, being a part of this, and this is why we're here. We would not be here if it were not for you guys. We would not have a career here if it were not for you guys. And I love my job. This is one of the best jobs I have ever had in my life, and I think the same thing with Jeff, right? So thank you. I know I'm moving around a lot, but I wanted to make sure we saw everybody to say thank you for that. <laughs> okay. So. We're going to start together by perhaps just a little bit of an introduction. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff Black. I lead our financial services customer consulting team. I hail from Pennsylvania, specifically Pittsburgh. My hobbies are on the right. There we go. Uh, my family's in the middle and the bottom two pictures I put in there to really show you what I'm up against every day. Work is easy. That is my son on a cloud of nine paper towel rolls he <laughs> tore apart and made a bed out of. And my daughter's probably fourth outfit of the day that she chose to wear. So I have a lot of challenges in life. <laughs> Jeremy. Yes you, yes, you do. So good afternoon. My name is Jeremy Walsh. Mm -hmm. I am a strategic customer success manager here at Tableau. I live in Massachusetts. I have my wife and two kids. We actually live on Cape Cod. We have a lot of time out on the beach, as you can see. We just kind of cruise out there. Such a great time. If you have not been to Cape Cod, I would highly encourage you to put it on your bucket list. I've been there, it's fantastic. Compliments to Jeremy. Anybody from Massachusetts? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let's, let's uh, so we'll begin our presentation here. So, so Jeff and I have been doing, I'm sorry about this. So Jeff and I have been doing this for a while, like 15 years between the two of us, you know, okay. here at Tableau, okay? And so, I mean, do you really want to do another, you know, corporate demonstration? Not ready, not really, right before day to no. night out. That's right, that's the next thing that's off, right? Yeah. So come on, I mean, we're, we're, we're in Vegas, I, people have the things in their head listening to us, this is bizarre, right? Total Vegas, I mean, what do you, think about Vegas? Well, I'm not thinking about TC, I think shows. Such a corporate guy. Shows. That's right, Vegas shows. How about a show of hands? How many of you have seen a show while you're here? Yeah, how many of you, what I'm asking is how many of you have snuck out to go see some sort of a show or something like that? Right, not many, right? Because we're here, we're here getting educated, we're here learning about Tableau. That's fantastic, yeah. right? And when you see a show, what do you think about? I think of costumes, Jeremy. A lot of costumes, right? The shows that you have seen, there are probably a lot of costumes. Yes. Jeff, work with me here. I have something. I have something here for us. I just what, want you what? to just kind of give this a shot here. Let's just kind of help them out a little bit. Okay. What do you think about that? Would that help a little bit? Right? The show, we have some music. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ride my cow down at Old Town Road. I'm gonna ride till I can't come. What? No, this isn't right. We're what? cooking. I, I got it, Jeremy. I got it. Y yep, this is it. What is. Here, oh, you put, sneaky dog. Put that you. on. How Let's did go. you? We got what this. Did you do? How did you do all of this? Yep. I don't understand. This is gonna be great. Did you go shopping? We're gonna love it. How did you? Did yeah, you what, souvenir shop across the road. What did you? Gonna, and you found They're looking at like us. Which, well, I, I, this is all the stuff that you're talking about? This is where you were that yeah. last session? You stood me up on all of that. Yeah, they said I skipped out on Dr. How did that? All right, so this is a cooking show. So we are going to be, for this session, what? Prep, Prep chefs. chefs. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's right. <laughs> all right. That was all awesome. Right. That's now enough. let's get serious. That's enough of that. All right, okay. All right. So thank you for that. Well, here, we have a show, so we're gonna give you some acts. All right, that's gonna be our agenda for this, the rest of this time, right? We're gonna bring it in just a little bit, put some reality to it. So we have three acts here that we're gonna show you. The first act, we're gonna give you a little bit of overview, 
why are we here? Why, why are you all here, right? Which I appreciate, but let's just talk a little bit about data and preparation and maybe some food. Then we're going to give you a quick demo just to level set, right? Just to find out how many of you have actually used Tableau Prep. And then we're going to run through some common scenarios with Prep. All right, so those are the three acts that we're going to do. So just sit back, relax, and let's just enjoy the show a little yeah. bit. All right, so act one. Cooking is hard, right? Who thinks cooking is hard, right? I think cooking is hard. I am horrible at cooking as hard, right? And as prep chefs, that is hard. I mean, how many of these buffets have you been to that look this magical like this? I mean, let's just think about what goes into this. It just doesn't pop out of the oven like this, right? The easy bake ovens? No, not at all. There's a lot of thought and time and preparation that needs to go into this. Where is this food coming from? Is it FDA approved? Governance? I don't know, it could be. How many people have to get out there and get it? Is it easy to get? This lobster behind me comes from Maine, perhaps. That's not something easy. Will it mix and match with all this other stuff that we see up here on the, on the screen? Cooking is hard. Preparing your food for dinner is hard. You know what else is hard? Preparing your data, right? Would anybody agree with that? Some of us may think it's daunting. I think it's daunting. I've been doing this now for quite a while and it still is daunting. So getting your data ready, think about that for just a minute. All of our data, we have a data in our machines here, in our homes, <laughs> right? On our watches. How many of you right now are counting your steps every day? Oh yeah, right? I woke up pretty tired this morning myself. It's a lot of data that we have to consider that we're working with, right? And that can be hard. And that can also take up a lot of time. And that's something that we want to work with a little bit. So a lot of customers tell us data prep is challenging. Today to do analysis, they may be working in Excel, creating calculations, trying to get the data ready for them to do the fun drag and drop and visualizations. Or they're attempting to do SQL, Oof. attempting. Some people like it, Jeremy has no shot. I don't, SQL, SQL, <laughs> SQL is part two to a movie for me, all right? So let's, let's just. <laughs> and others have products in their organizations that they may not have access to or have a steeper learning curve. And research shows that 80% of the time people are doing an analysis, they're preparing their data. So think about that for a minute. If you have one hour, if your manager comes over, boss comes over, or you need to do it for yourself at you know, personal finance at home, and in one hour's time, in 60 minutes, 48 minutes will be spent getting your data ready. That leaves 12 minutes just to do the real analysis part, the value add. I don't know many people that want to just spend all their time getting data ready. If you do, that's fantastic. But we're here to flip that ratio with Tableau Prep. That's why we built it. We listened to customers like you who said, this is a huge pain point. And we want you accelerating your ability to get stuff done. So before we can talk about that, let's just visit a little bit of how we got here around data preparation. I'm sure many of you have used a plethora of products that are out there to get your data put together. And you had to find a way to get like data quality. How about event processing that's up here? Using an ETL process, or was it a ELT? I forget, it's right both. all, it's so, right, exactly, it's both of them, right? Finding that one set of data, that golden record <laughs> that you would set that you could never email around or somewhere buried in the basement, right? So that's how we're getting here, right? That's why we're talking more about Tableau Prep to help ease that type of pain, right? What's old is what's new again, right? So we had, you know, warehouses before, we have data lakes now. You know, before it was megabytes, now it's petabytes, right? We constantly hear about how much data that we are consuming and we have to work with, all right? I'll tell you one thing that has really come together in these last few years is the collaboration between the IT organization and the business organization, right? Would you agree with that, right? How many of you out there are IT? How many of you out there are business? Yeah, we're all together, this is yeah. what I'm talking about, right? That type of collaboration has worked and that's what we want. 
right? We're talking about in Blueprint itself here as we're promoting that thing. Look at, we have this great offering that you can talk about how you can work both data, business, follow these steps. It's a wonderful, ubiquitous world, okay? Tableau has taken our time, as you know, to fix that. As Jeff said, we really kind of condensed that gap, right? All right, so I think what we're going to do is do a little bit of a demo here. All right? About time, Jeremy. About time, right. I mean, actually, yeah, it is actually right about time that we have to do that. I have a quick question while Jeff sets that up. How many of you are uh, using Tableau Desktop? Yeah. How many of you out there are using Tableau Prep? Yeah. Any well, first time seeing Prep for the first time today? Yeah. Wow. Hey, me too. So he's kind of screwed. <laughs> I'll do the demo. All right. So here, We'll start with a prep introduction, okay? Similar to Tableau Desktop, we've kept it very simple. For instance, what you're looking at right now is the splash page, similar to Tableau Desktop. You can see in the middle here, you have a lot of your recent flows that you can access right away. On the right-hand side, you can see there's a discover window, and over here is where we can connect and work with the community, maybe click on some links for some easy learning from our website. On the left-hand side, you'll notice that we have a connections window as well. And in this window, just like in Tableau Desktop, we have a plethora of connections that you can work with. And I bet you probably see your favorites up there and maybe some new faces as well, right? So we'll connect to that legacy data, web data. We have this great opportunity to connect to all of them, all right? So what we'll do, just like in desktop, is we'll connect to some data, and let's just, we'll, we'll go through a few of these different steps. So let's see, Jeff, we'll do Microsoft Excel. Everyone has Excel, Jeremy. Everybody has Excel. I don't know, the scenario will be, imagine you work for a company for many years as an independent company, and then another big company came in and bought you. Sounds familiar. So maybe you would want to do like an analysis yeah. on that type of data. So think about, Whenever we talk about Tableau Prep, I always like to tell people kind of where we're marching. We have data, we're going to do things in the middle that you don't really know what you know, we're going to do, right. but we want to help paint that picture. Our goal is to take two different files, one that's our company data, one from the other company's data, mix them together. And you can only imagine the challenges with that. Field names are different, these ones have columns, this one doesn't. And what we really want to do is get to a point where we can actually do an analysis to see what the combined company looks like. That's our goal in the next handful of minutes with this, these data sets. Right, because how many, times is it, how, how many times has that happened? You just get data and somebody says, you know, fix it, look at it, give me an analysis and, you know. One over there? 10 minutes or something of that nature. Do a demo. On everyone, right. if you're not raising your hand, yeah, you're yeah. lying to us. Yeah. Come on now. Come on. What, stay, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. You can tell us, it's all right, okay? All right, so let's move on. So we'll connect to some data here. So we've got some company data. I'm just going to give it a click. On the left-hand side, you'll see that there are a variety of tables that exist within that file, right? So you can either double click, drag and drop. I'll just do a, a double click. And what's happening now is Tableau is really quickly parsing through the data and we're getting a profile view of what's in there. Then you can choose a certain number or a sample of data that you'd like to use if you want. On the very top of your screen up here, in the top part of what you're looking at, this third, this is going to be referred to as your flow. This is where the zen happens. This is where all the action is. The middle section is going to be the data uh, profile window, and then we'll also have the raw data that's going to be exposed here in just a minute. Now, as Jeff just said, you ought to get the data, you'll have to connect a whole bunch, so let's just do that. We have our one set of data, now let's go get something like a uh, Tableau extract. Right, here's the, the, uh, the little company. Yeah. <laughs> we'll bring that in. I hope that you've noticed in that flow window we already have visual representation, right? True Tableau fashion. One set is blue, one set is orange. And you can see how it's done a quick profile from there. So, the first step is to merge all of this information, get it together so we can start to do that analysis. I'm just gonna click, drag, and look at this visual I get. What do you wanna do? Do you wanna join? Do you wanna do a union? I don't know. Let's give it a go. Let's click on union first. 
And you'll see what happens is that we have a step appears to show that action up in the flow, the middle section, that's the data profile, and the very bottom you have the raw data. I mean, awesome. We have literally taken the best components of these you know, tools that you have used in the past and just put it up here in one stop, right? To make it easy. Because as Jeff said earlier, we're just trying to save time, right? I mean, how many of you are staying to the office till seven and eight o'clock at night when you really just want to get home to those two kids, right? Or head out to the pub or probably keep your family, stay with the two kids, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. For us, yes. So here you do, you have your union. So let's just talk a little bit about what we're looking at. You've got the flow at the top, you can see over here visually, you have the blue and the orange that represents the two different tables. You can see all the fields that are here. Here's that uh, profile section that exists. Now, I'm curious, does this happen to you? Probably not, but does this, you know, like in one data set, you have something like, um, like USA, and then another data set, you have the United States. All right? the time. Like mismatching information, does that ever happen? And now what? What do you? <laughs> What I do is I get one screen open over here, another screen open over here, and I'm trying to match this stuff up, and I'm, I'm pretty angry. Because yeah. <laughs> that's not very fun. So here's one of the first time-saving benefits that we can look at. Look at this little guy right here. Show only my mismatched fields. Wow. So I really enjoy this option because I can see between the colors which fields have what. So notice we have something called profit in one of these fields and profitability in another field. So I'm simply just going to click, drag, drop, and magically, as if in a Vegas show, it's all just one field now, right? That's a big deal. Honestly, that is a very big deal because that's time consuming. You're not writing SQL, you're not writing code, you're not trying to merge all of these records together. It's just done simply, time saving, okay? So now that we've got our fields all matched up and we're comfortable, what I'm going to do is add a step. Up here, there you see this little plus sign and you can see we have a variety of options. I'm simply just going to add a step. And so these next few minutes, we're just gonna take you through some of the things you can do, right? Already we've hit, what? Connected to data and join yep. the data. Yeah. Look at it split like that. And then you we're talking about cleaning the data. So we'll work with cleaning the data and just start talking about some of that. So for instance, how about this field right here? I'm just gonna scroll to the right in my profile window and look for something like order date. Here's the order date field. This is interesting because I would expect my order date, I don't I wanna see month, year, year, day. I want, I'm not seeing that, I'm seeing some sort of an odd view. Could you help me with that please? Yep, absolutely Jeremy. So a lot of the things in the profile pane, we're trying to help you understand visually quicker. Personally for me, before I do this, I used to always, when I would get a file handed from someone, whether it's from a customer, or whether it was when I was a customer four and a half years ago, before coming to Tableau, I would go into desktop, I would drag a field in, then I would remove it. Drag another field in, then I would remove it. Worse yet, I would open an Excel file, scan rows and columns, and then become cross-eyed. What I really appreciate about this is I'm able to scan a lot of my fields and understand what's in there. Do I have geographic data? Do I have uh, metrics? Do I have a lot of dimensions or not? Things that I can help understand, is this going to be a good data set for me to do analysis? Will I have to do a lot of work? So in this case, I might want to look at the details, Jeremy, not the summary. That is what I expected to see, right? Now I have that detail, so I'm not looking at the summarization, but hold on a second. Are you trying to tell me that Tableau has snuck a little view into the data cleansing yeah. window itself? There's a little viz in there, right there. That's fantastic, right? It's almost like an automatic show me has just popped up to show us that summarized data that's in there. To Jeff's point, to just really easy, quickly, saving time to find that data. So you can see we have a whole bunch of data. Each record is represented, how many are in there. I could just you know, literally scroll down to the bottom if I wanted to. And what's interesting is that you'll, perhaps you can see up there is that we have data from 20, 51. So how did that, is that, does that happen? Fat finger key. Does data you like that You don't like that doing happen? data entry, Jeremy. I don't Your like boss data. is back there. That's exactly right. It's so what I'll do with this data is I'm just want to clean it up, right? Because ultimately we're going to provide this for some perhaps analytical team. So great. Let me just give this a quick click. We'll choose filter. We'll use a range of dates that are in here. And then very easily I'll just change this. I could use the ruler, but I'll just put in 2020. Hit enter. And that's it. My data is now clean for exactly what I want to do for my analysis up to 2020. I know 
the rest of my organization is going to have good data, mm -hmm. at least with the date field. All right, so far so good. Let's let's carry on. Well, I'm going to move over a little bit further. Oh, what can we look at here? Maybe some, you know, segment. So, so Jeff, Jeff is a very humble guy. He works here at Tableau uh, and represents a large organization known as the Financial Services or FinServe, right? Whenever you get an acronym, you're an important person. I don't have an acronym. Anybody from FinServe here, Financial Services? Yeah, you guys are Couple. super people. Thank you for raising your hand because you are important because you have an acronym, right? So what would a FinServe, if I wanted to rename something like this, what would FinServe rename this? Some might consider consumer to be retail. All right. Some might leave it as consumer, but we'll change it to retail. Right, and then the same, just to save time, I mean, you've probably already figured this out. Yeah, I'll just double click it, retail, right? This is what we're expecting from our software today. So easily changed, done. What's next? We can leave corporate the same, and then home office, let's label it investments, Invest because I know you're not going to be able to spell mortgage correctly. Mor There's a T in mortgage, right? <laughs> so investments, go with investments. Look at now I can't get investments right. Thanks for that, that was fantastic. All right, so what investments? So now we have our three, you know, renaming our columns. Let's just reel it in for one second. We're talking about saving time. We're trying to show just how quick and easy it is to just make these changes within your data so you can get it prepared for that, right? So far, would you agree, right? Nobody's written any SQL. Nobody got hurt up here writing code, right? We're doing well so far, okay. So here, let's just kind of move on down. What did I notice earlier? You know, here's a field state. So I have seen this a little bit, right? In this particular field, which would drive me crazy, is you can see there are some weird um, different marks within the, the fields apostrophe. themselves. Apostrophe is the word I was looking yeah. for, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> and <laughs> it's an apostrophe. All right, so what would I have to do? I would have to trim this, right? Or have to work with leading zeros, et cetera, from there. Like, it's just a pain in the butt. So instead, we were talking about cleaning the data. Isn't this lovely? One of the options that you have is clean. So great, and you have a sub-menu of options that you can choose from here as well, right? So I'm just going to remove the punctuation from that cleaning slump, and let's just mouse over it and remove punctuation. Great, so that's done, and that was pretty easy as well. Can't make it any easier than that. Jeremy, do me a favor, because I know we have a lot of IT folks in here, and they're thinking, governance just went out the door. You're just throwing it away. Can you click that changes pane for me? Over, over here, yes. Yeah. Oh. Let's oh, talk about that for a minute. Good idea. So everything that Jeremy's done to date, every one of those data modifications is now tracked in what I call the audit pane, or what I like to also re to refer to it as the time machine or a DeLorean, because I can always go back and inspect what did my data look like before and after I make some of those changes instantly on the fly. Wow. Customers good. also tell me that they're actually handing this to other people, the document processes, have an audit trail. It's an audit trail. Many different use cases. Can you find that, something like that useful? Yeah, a lot, a lot of people nodding their heads yes in that, absolutely, right? Because you know you're going to have to take this and pass this off to another branch to make sure they were getting it QC correctly. I got it. Jeff, that was really very good. <laughs> so as we were in states, we just kind of cleaned up the data a little bit there. Here's something interesting. Let me just click on this field here, country, and I'm just going to select Australia. And has anybody noticed on the screen itself, as I just move it a little bit, notice on the screen some of the fields, now we've already talked about how you have a visual representation of how many rows are in that, but can you see the blue? Can you see that blue hue in there? It's referred to as brushing, right? So what are we showing, Jeff, in this brushing? What we're doing is really showing the associated records that apply to Australia. So for example, if Adam Hart makes purchases in many different locations around the globe, or rather, all the customers make different purchases, we're seeing that Adam has made 80 purchases around the globe, the globe rather. Specifically, eight records or eight purchases, which is 10%, are made in Australia. So you have some association there. It gives you ability to do some data checks. And this can actually cascade 
to multiple different fields by holding the control key and then inspecting your data. So it really helps you, some customers tell me, when you look in measures and metrics, where do I have thresholds for cost centers that are out of bounds? Where do I have negative profitability on items that I shouldn't? Then they can go back and start to modify things back in the source versus getting everything through the pipeline and then having pain in the analysis end. Are you telling me that I don't have to open up Tableau Desktop to go through this type of analysis? I could just be asked this question going through data prep, saving all of that time? Absolutely. That is, that's amazing in itself right yeah. there, right? So you don't have to, we've just now reduced yet another process or another step that's coming out of there. And that's really important and often that gets lost. The visual analysis that's taking place in prep right now as we're doing it. So let's try not, let's, please let's not forget anything like that. All right, so we've got this step in here. It's, it's called clean. That's, this is our cleaning step that we've done. Now let's bring in some other data. What, we had another data set we're going to bring in and we'll merge into that. Let's go grab another Excel file and we'll have targets. So while you do that, Jeremy, a lot of customers ask us, well, how do I know if Tableau Prep is right for me? I have other things. I don't know if this is going to be the right fit. Generally, my response is, if the activities you need to do are integrate your data, joins and unions like Jeremy started to look at, clean your data, some of the things we've looked at, pivot, rows to columns, columns to rows. Some of that is in desktop, but not both. Or aggregate your data. Generally, that's the biggest hiccup people run into when they're joining data is they have data at different levels of granularity. The aggregation and then the join in here will really help them. So one of the things Jeff just mentioned is pivoting data. And that's a tricky deal, right? I mean, we, there's lots of different ways you can pivot data. And right? We've been, over the years, Tableau, we've made lots of attempts. Well, let's just show you a nice easy way. We've brought in this new data set. I'm just going to add another step just to kind of investigate that data, right? And you can see in the middle section there, the profile window, that it looks like we have lots of columns, right? So we have one month per column. That's where our data is residing. Where I would rather, and Tableau prefers, to have just, in this case, it would be maybe two columns, a date column, and then the value column, right? So we have to pivot that data. So here, let's just do that. One click. We'll do add a pivot. From in here, I'm just simply going to choose or tell Tableau, hey man, this is what I want to do. I want to pivot these fields, drag it over. So now I have my two fields pivoted. I have what I want. This is going to allow us to do a deeper analysis in Tableau. This is a big hang up for a lot of people when they're working and trying to clean their data. And then here, this is called, we'll call this the date field. And this will be, well, I forgot what this was, target. Awesome, that's our target data. Now that we have this data that's in here, you can see for both, let's bring this one in. So we're gonna complicate it even further, but we'll do it with ease. I'll grab our pivot data, drag and drop it, and this time let's talk about a join, right? Because I avoided it the first time, hoping I wouldn't have to do it, but there's no way around it, we gotta do it. So I'm gonna drag it in, drop it in here, so now I'm gonna join that pivoted data. So we have multiple data sources, and you can see how they're pivoted, how they're joined, you can see in the data flow how easy it is. And now we learn that we have this audit trail that we can also share off and even just break off pieces of it. In this data, you'll notice there's a Venn diagram up here in the top in your flow. So let me just show you that. And it's identifying the type of join, right? It also exists down in here. You know, is it an inner join, an outer join, a full join, a left join, a right join? I'm going to stop right there because I don't know what I'm talking about anymore, but there's a lot of joining that's going on, right? So what you can do now is it will identify how it's joined, right? The two fields, right? Primary foreign key-ish. Now you can look at the two different fields. Here's that Venn diagram and all the different records that are in there. And that sounds great and wonderful. And the really smart people that I work with all the time make this look real easy, but I don't know. Does this work? Did I do it right? Is how it's going to look like on the outset? So how about this? We were talking about Ubiquity earlier. Let's give this a quick, uh, excuse me, a click. And let's open this up in Tableau Desktop. Just for fun, because I know almost everybody in this audience raised their hand for desktop. You're probably itching for some sort of a desktop right now, right? Maybe you're thinking, oh shoot, I who wish wants, I went to that class. Who wants to see Jeremy do a desktop demo? Two. Two people. Two? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who wants to see me do the demo then? 
<laughs> there we no. go. That's unfair. Wait, stop. Go you ahead. set that up. That's <laughs> horrible. We're going to do a quick, so I'm validating my, you're trying to trip me up here. We're validating our data. So I'll just bring in, you know, something like that country. And then we'll also bring in the, uh, the actual value. So I don't know, there's that profitability. And maybe we'll put that on the color. And so, okay, so this proves my point, right? I brought this into desktop because this is gonna be eventually the output that my audience is gonna use. And I know that there are more countries that are in there, right? But I've only, I only see the three, so I definitely screwed something up. So here, I'm just going to, it's the join. So let's just investigate that for one second. Now let's close that down. Go back to Tableau Prep. And in this example, you can see the number of records that have been included and excluded. Why, and why am I pointing that out? Because of the type of join that I selected. So all I have to do is make the change, left join, all of the data automatically aggregated appropriately. So now if I wanted to bring it into Tableau again, I'd see all the different countries in there again. What I really love that we did here was we actually took a lot of pain points people have, and I personally have had, where I do these things and then I have to create a quality control or a record total data step after that or an output. Now it's integrated in, so as you change things on the fly, or to Jeremy's point, who doesn't know joins, you can toggle those back and forth and understand that cause and effect. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> All right, output. It's a good time to stop for an output, right? Because that's one of the steps that we're gonna do here. Now what do I do with the data? So I'm just gonna give this a click, and I'm just gonna add an output. And the different options that I have in here are something as simple as, you know, do I want to create a CSV file, FinServe? All right, you all love to do all that. An of Excel course. file. How about a Tableau extract? Or how about if we take it and publish it up to Tableau server so then it can be consumed there? And perhaps on Tableau server, you learned about certified data sources. So now everybody in the organization fully understands that we have an approved data source that could be used by anyone. Like this is that, remember we talked about the golden records earlier. Essentially, we had done just something of that nature, right? So it's really easy to get that put out there, okay? Does that make sense so far? Yeah, that's, so that's just our intro. That's the introduction part, that's act one. Just to kind of level set with everybody, we did a little bit of history. We talked a little bit about how we can interact with, tab, with uh, Tableau Prep. We, we brought in the, uh, the components you were talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, joining the data, accessing the data, joining the data, pivoting the data, cleaning the data, and we did all that in, yeah, 30. 32 minutes. 32 minutes. So in that hour that we normally have, right, that we talked about earlier, 48 minutes down to 32, right. with a little show in the beginning. <laughs> that was a show? That was a good show, okay. All right. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to our second act. Okay. Act two, common scenarios. So I'm gonna leave it in this non-presentation mode because I'm going to toggle back and forth between PowerPoint and desktop. So what I, what I really wanted to do, now that Jeremy's given you a nice demo or an overview, oh, and there's you. a lot of folks who haven't seen Tableau Prep before, I want to show you a few different things that our customers are doing with the product that I see day in and day out. Then, if you go and use this, maybe you use it today, maybe you'll use it in the future, you at least have a little bit of a playbook on, hey, I'm thinking about this. I remember these crazy chefs doing this thing, and crazy. I have an idea how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to cover four things. I could go on and on, and we will have some Q&A at the end. But I just wanted to cover the four we typically have, starting with the first one. And Jeremy created that beautiful flow. That crazy beautiful flow. Yeah, crazy beautiful flow that we were looking at. He did warn me. I don't want to have to open this every day every week, every month, and push this little button that does run off. And I want to put it on autopilot. So earlier this year, we announced Tableau Prep Conductor. It's part of data management. And it looks like this. So if I'm in desktop, or rather prep, similar to desktop, I could sign in and I could publish this flow to Tableau server. While this flow is much more complicated, you get a preview of what it looks like, the flow you published. 
You can see the outputs that are running. And in this case, this flow has numerous outputs. Where Jeremy's had one, this one has multiple outputs. One of the benefits there is when I create a scheduled task, I have the ability to pick a schedule. For example, I might want to run something 4 AM every day. In this case, one of my outputs is a transaction table. That I want to run every single day at 4 o'clock. But I don't necessarily want to run the whole flow with all five outputs. This gives me a little more control. Creating the task will create that on server, and that will it'll run on autopilot with all the governance and auditing that all the IT folks in here will love, as well as me. Or if I want to run everything, I can choose a different, create a different task, and then have everything run under, let's say, every end of the month, every week, every quarter, whatever it might be. So that's creating tasks. And the key is, if you have lots of outputs, you have the ability to pick and choose when you run each individual output that's listed here. Additionally, you have control over connection information, like modifying your SQL server or relational database. And you also get a run history. Unfortunately, all of Jeremy's flows fail. What? <laughs> but the good news is, he gets alert on all of these all day long. Oh, Jeff. Goes to clutter and he doesn't do anything. <laughs> that's awesome. So that's a quick overview of Conductor. We'll jump to the next scenario. Creating LODs. How many people create an LOD? How many people enjoy creating LOD calculations? <laughs> a few less. How many people want to do an LOD, have that in your data set, persist in your data set, without writing a calculation? Oh, I do. A lot. Well, let's look at how we can do that. Oh, fired oh. up email. It's, it's hot. There we go. So if we have a data set we're looking at, like earlier, what I'm going to do that Jeremy didn't hit was create an aggregation. Now, an LOD is really just creating a metric at a different level of granularity than my data set. So for example, if I have all of the transactions people have made, I might want to identify where are those at by state. We can add state and group that field, and then go get our sales value. We want to aggregate that at the state level. Drag and drop, there's my first LOD. I'm done. In Tableau Desktop, curly bracket, fixed, maybe miss a few identifiers, so on and so forth. I didn't have to do that. And the beauty is, what if I wanted to do this for another field, like profitability that, Jer that Jeremy talked about earlier? I drag and drop that in. Now I've done two calculations. Or quantity. There's a third one. I've now rolled all of that up without writing a calculation. I can now join this back to my original data set. Tableau is also going to try, with a recommendation engine, get the join right. You do have other join clause recommendations down here. Some people call that AI. Some people call that machine learning. Some people just call that a nice, friendly recommendation, if you're more advanced. How many of you know what an LOD is? How many of you do not? myself included, know what an LOD is. Yeah, right? So now we are the ones who suffer because we have to build this in Tableau Desktop. But guess what? The time that we can save having it built here in the flow, pushed out, now we can just use it as a drag and drop feature. That's what I want to have, right? So now I'd have to struggle up about creating all those LODs. Yeah. Copy that. And the other benefit is, and I spent a lot of time in Doctor this week, I saw a lot of people come in writing calculations. And there's a lot of them. And say, I have this performance problem. Taking 30 seconds for the dashboard to load. We open the workbook. There's calculation after calculation. Going at runtime. When we've persisted those calculations we need for something like a percent of total, 
as a for instance, it's already materialized in my data. I now won't have that expense on my dashboard at runtime. So it's a time saver as well. Take it up another level. Each one of these will get a little more advanced. So how many people want to use or do use Python today? A couple. I talked to a, a gal earlier. Actually, she's right there. Uh, wanted to use Python. In our last version in September, we introduced Python and R as part of Tableau Prep. Let's take a look at what that looks like on an easy level so we kind of understand how this could work. So if we have a data set with just two columns in it, I might want to add a row ID or an auto ID number or something like a rank. Ideally, yeah, I want this in prep. I'm sure we're working on it. However, I want to be able to do it today. First step, I'm going to create a calculated field. We haven't touched one yet. 40 minutes in, we've done a lot, and this is the first calculation. <coughs> it's pretty significant. What I've done is create an index field. I called it index. And I populated it with just a generic value of 0. I'm going to use that field to have the Python script basically populate an auto ID for every one of these orders in my data set. To set that up, we would add a script, connect to your R or Python server, navigate to a file that has the Python logic that you've written. It might look something like this. This is a very simple one. It's basically saying, hey, populate an index or a value into my index field that I created. That script runs, and what it'll do is add that counter number into my data set. And now I'm done. There's lots of different variations for that. I'd love to hear what you, you all think you want to do with this. I know some customers are using this to apply some data science models into their data set for risk, if they're in banking, or churn analyses. However, for me, one of the biggest things I have used it for is just ranking where are different accounts and the number of support cases they've had. That's how I've used this at Tableau myself. Next, I want to cover one more for all the server folks in the room. There are some, or people that leverage Tableau server and has, have challenges with things taking a while to get done on something called a background room. So a lot of customers have started considering and are using Tableau Prep Conductor to really optimize the server environment. What I mean is, let's look at this example. If you're a Tableau server customer, you can schedule things like alerts. By the way, one of the most underutilized features that I see people Without a doubt. not using. Extract refreshes, which I'm sure a lot of you are using. And subscriptions, meaning send me that dashboard to my email whenever I've asked it to. But then you have someone create some big extract that runs for eight hours or four hours. And it basically clogs the pipeline of all of these. And they don't get done. So that subscription or alert you wanted at 7 AM is sitting there waiting for this thing to go. And if you don't scale out your environment, you can end up with a, a, a backlog. For people that don't know a lot of those terms, just think of having all of us in a car driving down the road out here, and there's a tank in front of us taking up both lanes. What people can do is use prep conductor or move that background job into conductor, which opens up another lane. Create a new lane. Tank can go down that lane, or large extracts can run in conductor and let all of these run on your background. So something just as we amp up some of these ideas, some of the practical applications I see customers using, and I hope you all get some tips off of those. If you want to learn more about that, come up during q and I'm happy to talk about this. You can always reach out to your account team and ask them about this concept. It's trending up a lot recently. So with that. Oh, okay. So 
So far we've talked a lot about why we're here, using our, with preparing for the data, you know, what concepts to think about. We've gone through a demonstration and some high level, quick um, uh, ways tips. to clean the data, the tips and so forth. And then we went through some a little bit more complicated ways that you can incorporate ta uh, Tableau Prep into your, into your universe. And while we want to be your sous chefs, we're not available every day for all of you as much as we'd like to be. True, that is very <laughs> true, we're not. So this next section, we're going to start to wind down a little bit with a Q&A, okay? But wait, before you go anywhere, right? Because that's what that, you hear Q&A, the thing is up, you're out the door, right? Hold on, there's what I have. We're going to walk around, we're going to ask a couple of questions here. And we've partnered with our what premier partners here, user ready, who is here, right? Perhaps you've done the mini golf. Or you've seen this to win. Right. So they're giving away a golf cart. Uh, you can put your name in, which I highly recommend it. They're over in the booth right over here, 807, for one of these. But more importantly, they have, we have worked with them to create um, a book called Tableau, uh, Practitioner's Guide to Tableau Prep. So this is fun, right? You're learning a lot about all this, but you're going to go home and you're going to think, shoot, what the heck? What did they just say? So let's do this for these next 15 minutes. Anyone who asks a question, we're going to give you one of these very expensive books. This is like a, you know, an expensive book. And this, in fact, this book will become more expensive because Jeff will sign the book for you a dollar more so, at the end of the session. That's awesome. Jeremy signs it, ten dollars more, forty to so forty-one. So I'm going to go to get a microphone, 51. and we're going to look at this. This is a, this is the first session where everyone has stayed sat so they can have questions. This is awesome. The bribery works. <laughs> Unfortunately. Jeremy's not going to answer all your questions. He will come around. Or if you want to share, and one of the things I love about conference is, we'll get the questions. If you want to share how you're using Tableau Prep for all of your uh, peers here to make that connection, that's really important. That connection and sharing of stories for a lot of people means more than just listening to us. So make sure you collaborate and take advantage of that the rest of the week. Jeremy. Okay, so we'll, we'll kind of go on each side. We'll start over here. We have our first question. By the way, Jeff, you sound horrible in these things. Yeah. Thank you. Um, question on the data source you can connect to, um, and specifically on Box. Um, is it coming in the next version? Because we've been told multiple times it's coming. Um, reason I'm asking is you ask for sharing the we, we use both um, SQL access on database and box access for CSV exports that gets refreshed automatically with the syncing of box. But I can't publish right now because one of the data inputs is not supported on the publish side. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my main question. I don't have the target on when it's supported. But what I will say is go right over there, if you haven't been, to the dev team and you can actually use prep, give them feedback, and pick their brain and maybe bribe them. So you mentioned the uh, seven hour job loads. Yeah. What are the row limits on this? In what? Tableau Prep? Yeah. Theoretically, it's still powered by Hyper. And actually, it's still powered by Hyper. And actually, what a lot of people don't know is if I'm going against a data source like this, which is Hadoop, and we're doing things that that Hadoop or that database supports, we will actually push a lot of that work back to, at the database and have the database do that processing. More specifically, for most people, the record limits are tied down to your laptop. That's why Conductor is giving them another list. So I don't, there's not a definitive answer, unfortunately. Okay, uh, my question is, can I use save the flow as a data source? The data, the output, yeah, that will be, as Jeremy mentioned, is a file, but you can also publish it as a data source. So there is a little checkbox to say publish this to Tableau server, mm -hmm. choose your server, enter credentials, and then publish it. By the way, I really recommend that. Please add governance to your world. Yes, is the licensing role-based or user-based? For conductor or prep? 
builder. What we're looking at is prep builder here. Prep builder, yep. Uh, I'm on this side of the room, Jeff. Uh, it's crazy running I around. I hear you. Um, <laughs> part of the creator skew. Uh, so if you're on the role-based licensing, Thanks. you get Tableau Prep with that. If you're not, you need to talk to your account team because they can tell you what the terms of your contract are. Sometimes they can differ from customer to customer. Another question I have is if you're bringing in an Excel file as a data source connection, you showed that it would automatically show the various sheets. We have a system that'll output old school XLS files with 65,000 records per sheet. Is there a quick and easy way to combine, say, 100 tabs into a single table oh. with data prep? Good question. Great question. Um, when you connect to multiple files, there is a wildcard union option, assuming this is where you were going. Um, it'll allow you to specify, hey, I want to grab everything within a folder, within a directory. And I can even, for a lot of people, they'll have a date stamp at the end. You can actually specify sales underscore whatever that date is. And it'll then loop through that uh, folder anytime it runs and then automatically union all those together. Uh, how do I fix my refreshes that are failing every single time with, in prep? There could be so many answers to that. Professional services. <laughs> It could be database, it could be credential related, it could be a timeout issue. It's my suggestion, contact support and go from there as a starting point. I, ha I have a use case and the when I open prep and get in my data set, I'm a nurse and I'm working in the electronic medical record so nothing actually has a name. It just has a few characters. So when I'm working in prep and I pull a data set in, it helps me do patients, um, blood pressure, things that I wouldn't be able to tell without seeing the preview in prep. Let's table that one and talk after. Come up here and find me if you have time. Yep. Or I'll be a data night out and use your app to send me a message. You know, it's really, I like to look at people when they ask me questions. It's so kind of read lips, and it's really weird when there's a That's box. why we're over here. We're way in the back, Jeff. <laughs> so I find when I join various data sources, I have a lot of nulls between the different data sets. What's your quickest and easiest way to get rid of all the nulls without use, losing all of my other data connected to it? Let me think about that one. Come find me. Table number two. It's Table it. I don't want to give you an answer and then take you down a path. It's going to have to have you rewind. I'm really excited to be getting prep um, mm. in the near future in our area. Um, one of my questions is I have two data sets. I have two different files that I'm pulling information in and uh, they do time differently. How are we, how are we going to be able to adjust that without having to doctor it? Yeah, so is that more or less a time where you have year, 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 month, month, another one has month, month, day, day? Is that? Oh, I'm left. One will be 60 minutes and one will be 60 M. I'll give you a tip. Don't know if it'll work. With dates. If a field is brought in as a string or a date, and specifically a string, which is how I often have seen it, Try clicking on date or date time. That has intelligence built in that we added. It replicates what we did in Tableau Desktop that we added in in version 9 or 10, where you can actually just click on a field, say apply, this is a date, and then it goes in through all kinds of different date variations, and then it puts it in an hour, month, slash day, slash year, 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 year format. So I've 
I use that all the time because dates are always different. So try that. Okay. Like some of your longer term clients who don't do role-based licensing, um, I'm very cautious in pushing this out to people because we don't know what it's going to cost come next June. Any ideas yet? Well, I have the smart aleck example, which nope. is eight hundred and forty dollars, which is the same as the creator. But I understand. Um, we don't. I don't have an answer. Um, I would just continue to work with your account team and try to get information. On okay, it. I'm going to that right here. Sure. I'm going to take a few more. Can you go back to the wild card? Yeah. Uh, can you export like from second row on an Excel tab? Because sometimes the extract has a title and oh, then. Yeah. We have use data interpreter in here. Who's not familiar with data interpreter and desktop either? And whoever gets a file where I go and delete things out of the first couple rows, just click data interpreter, please. Okay. But that should take care here of it. Here we go. Um, the by the way, one other thing with Tableau Prep, we do sampling. So if you're working with lots of data, I think one of the gals in here, and you know the steps you want to do in the flow, we're going to continue to requeer everything and profile it. What you want to do is consider just adding a fixed number of fields or rows, like 10. That'll allow you to chunk through your process, develop it really quickly without requeering on bigger data. And then when your flow is built, you can come back at the source level and just modify this to say, use all data. Uh, I have a question about um, when you did the joins and you did the middle join first and then you switched it to, I guess, a, le a left join. Mm -hmm. The uh, In the uh, panels there, what stays red and what turns black? I was thinking that once you did the left join, oh. that the stuff on the left side would all be black because it would all be in the database. In these two. Um, is that where you mean? Well, it was a different one with the countries, I think. You had, um, uh, I can't re quite remember. Here? That, that one, yeah. Yeah, what this is showing, another big time saver is, hey, you're doing a join, and these are all the values. Red meaning in one side, they're not in your other data set, so you don't have a match. And this side, you don't. In fact, I often demo this where I say Columbia, and then I spell Columbia wrong, which one of my employees told me. Oh, not you. Um, if I go and fix Columbia here, as a for instance, while well, the next question comes up, it will then do a match and they'll both fit. It's basically flagging what doesn't match. And this is very helpful. Thank you for all the information. So the question I want to ask is like for the autopilot you mentioned that we can, you know, schedule automatically. Will we able to create dependencies to make sure like the data source one finished, then we can run the data to source two? Is there any like function like that? We're working on that right to answer. give you easier buttons. A lot of people are putting some logic into the flow to then do a scan or a check for something to persist or not, and then killing the flow if it doesn't run, which won't overwrite on server. Yep, so, uh, thanks for this uh, presentation. I see New Year, uh, not you, but at the DC uh, local conference, they presented Tableau Pref about a year and a half ago. So it was right when it was coming out. So nice work uh, progressing this piece of software. Um, my question is, for the audit trail, is there a way to export that into a Word document or another source that we would be able to share without having somebody have to access Tableau Prep? So that's a frequently asked question. Go to the ideas forum and please vote it up. What I will say is most of these files are similar to desktop file XML, so I do know some customers have just scanned the XML of a prep flow to try and identify stuff that's changed. All right, so first of all, I, I think it's awesome that We have time, <laughs> Jeremy and I, for <laughs> you some more questions. After Woo! all that. So that's great, so thank you very much for sticking around.